Amon Ross St. Brown last season, 119 receptions, 164 targets, 1,515 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Thoughts on Amon Ra? Here's a guy I, know I, I really like also. You know, the, the sun god. It, it, it wouldn't surprise me if last year were his career were his career highs. As much as I like the guy, I just don't know what else he can do. 164 targets, like you said, over 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Like, I don't know that each one of those individually is his career high mark, but I think together, fantasy points wise, that might be his his high. Right? You hear, you know, Gibbs is coming along. They know that we know they want to run the football. You have um, uh, Jameson Williams being talked about. Like, it, it just. It would surprise me if you see a little bit of regression here. But that said, I still have a hard time passing at wide receiver five. Like even like I think I'm like I, I think I understand that regression, but he's only going into year four, guys. Like I mean, so as much as these seem like possible high water marks, I, I I see it just as likely that he damn near duplicates these numbers. So it, it's it's a risk I'm willing to take. How about that? This is a risk that I am willing to take for the most part. Now, I'm not saying that up against it, like if it was St. Brown or Bijan, that I wouldn't take Bijan because I think Atlanta's offense is going to be that dynamic and having kind of that solo alpha running back does help your team so much and then figure out where to piece wide receiver later because it is deeper. Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't do that, but if Bijan's gone, I like St. Brown, and I think I might – I'd take St. Brown over Brees Hall. This is the screw it, we ball pick. Like, you just – here we go. <laughs> like, it, it is just – if you are there in the middle of the first round and St. Brown is available, draft, move on. Like, don't even think about it. Just take it, move on. He's so young. He is entering his prime, right? Right. Uh, and yes, last year was crazy. It was a crazy year, but I think he can. I think that there is a, a second act to that that he can follow it up. So yeah, with Amon Ra, one of the one of the best things about uh, about the performance last year is he really didn't give you those those you know up and down just you know let you down when 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 you needed it right like. Really, the majority of his games, well, you know, a down week for him was a wide, was a wide receiver two on the week type of finish, but uh, was very consistent, right? Like when he, you know, even on games where he didn't necessarily score a touchdown, he still put up enough enough for you on the uh, yeah and, and the fantasy points to to be able to make it happen and, and not lose a week at that position. So there's a lot to like when you're when you're looking at a first round pick on that you want a guy that screams consistency, a guy that's going to get opportunity and the volume. And that is what you get with, uh, with Amon Ross at Brown. So um, yeah, Kevin, I, I, I do like the thought about the, the Bijan type of pick. I do like the thought um, you know, about some of these other guys, but, but Amon Ross is a, a tough guy to get away from. And, and if I'm sitting there, even at with a top five pick type of thing, um, one of those that I, I don't have the, the, you know, the problem pulling the trigger on, on Amon Ra. Um, to, to rock and roll that for my roster.